Alright guys, so after a bit of a hiatus, I'm back doing this uh, guide and as you can see I've swapped out the Spartan armor for some CT and in DDoS 2 on the map Counter-Strike. That came out backwards, I meant Counter-Strike on the map DDoS 2, but you know all that if you're even remotely connected to PC gaming. Anyway, today we're going to talk about GPUs, our graphics processing units or your graphics card. Now, when it comes to graphics cards, you just need to keep in mind that this is probably the single area where you need to do a lot of research yourself because there's so many graphics cards, so many configurations, all kinds of different things. I'm going to go over the basics, but when it actually comes down to picking your card for the price, I can't recommend you a genuine card. What I can say is that go look up your benchmarks, get the most amount of performance for your money, but also look at disadvantages and advantages. For example, I could have bought a 6970 easily, and I could have two of them now, but I chose the 560 Ti, which is less powerful. But the 560 Ti with Nvidia stuff tends to be quieter. I actually picked quiet versions of the card so my computer doesn't feel like it's gonna blast across the room with the air out of the fans. But anyway, let's get started into talking about the actual graphics cards themselves. When it comes down to actually picking your card, there are two manufacturers, ATI and NVIDIA. Now, ATI is often referred to as ATI AMD, since AMD own them, and NVIDIA is its own company. These are the main manufacturers. Now, when it comes down to actually certain variations of cards, such as these overclocked versions, other companies such as ASUS, Gigabyte, and, other, and lots of other ones take those cards, modify them, and then resell them as you know, more powerful versions of them. They generally contain different coolers so they can be quieter and all that kind of stuff as well and they run faster. But when it comes down to it, you're gonna be choosing your graphics card, as I said before, is a difficult process sometimes. And really, ATR and NVIDIA, when it comes down to picking one or the other, to be quite honest, there's no real difference. I find that ATI tends to be a bit better value, but NVIDIA tends to be a little bit uh, quieter. I think. <laughs> um, in reality though, it really comes down to what you actually want from your card itself. Now, when it comes down to picking your graphics cards, there's a couple of things you need to keep in mind. The first thing is, well, we'll be choosing your power supply later, but keep an eye on the power rating. Generally, 650 watts will run any single card, 750 will run most double configurations, I guess, like a crossfire, which we'll get into in a second. Now in order for to run a graphics card, you're going to need a PCIe x16 slot. That is the current standard for graphics cards. Uh, any motherboard that supports any modern chip in the last five years will have that slot, okay guys? So that's something you don't really need to worry about. Now the graphics card slot itself evolved quite a bit over time, so I'm going to give you a little bit of a history lesson. First of all it was the PCI slot, which is the kind of largish white slot good chunky slot size. Um, these were the original slots for graphics cards and every other type of card that plugged into your computer. Now if you want to run multiple cards, you just drop the second one in and it worked. Uh, this was the days of Windows 98, we had the PCIe card, not PCI cards. After that we had AGP, we are advanced graphics ports. Now the AGP slot is actually a funny shaped brown slot, you can see a picture of it on the screen. Uh, this is an outdated technology, you don't even have to know this, but it's kind of funny because the AGP slot was a classic when it came to computers. It was good, solid, ran well, but you couldn't run multiple cards in tandem. Now PCI is back to claim its throne by going all 2.0 express and with 16 times the bandwidth. Uh, the large yellow slot marked PCI 16 is the PCI slot that you're going to be putting your graphics cards into today. Now, as I've said before, there are a few flavors of PCIe 16. The first one being the one times two, there's one, four, eight, and 16 times slot. Essentially, this means how many lanes of data bandwidth the slot actually has. Now, when you're picking your motherboard, particularly if we're going SLI, we'll get into this when we get to SLI and Crossfire, but your motherboard should always have a PCIe time 16 slot, time 16 mode, it's often known as. Sometimes, for example, my board has two times 16 slots that run in times 16 mode, but I also have two times 16 slots that only have times 4 mode, which means that 
the slot, you'll fit the card in, but it'll only run at a quarter the bandwidth, which is not good. Now, the next thing I want to go over quickly is Crossfire and SLI. These are actually very, very similar. Crossfire is multi ATI cards, while SLI is for multiple NVIDIA cards. Now, you can run, as far as I know, up to three in tandem. Uh, some graphics cards such as the 590 or the 6990 from either manufacturer can are actually two of the lesser powerful cards in a single card so they're actually crossfire together for example a 590 is two 580s in cross no SLI it's an Nvidia card and then you can actually crossfire or not crossfire SLI two 590s to give you four 580s in crossfire technically I'm not really sure the actual details here but the thing you have to remember is that the recommendation I always give is buy the best single graphics card you can possibly get for the money you have to spend. Just buy the best one you can. You could always crossfire or SLI down the road for extra power. For example, I could only afford a 560 Ti and it seemed to be a good card after reading a lot of benchmarks. I'm going to post links to benchmarking sites in the description so you can look up these cards for yourself. But the 560 Ti seemed to be good. I bought a gigabyte of super overclock, one gigahertz version. And then down the road, I bought a second one and I plugged it into the computer. And now I have two 560 Ti's running in SLI. Now, if you want to run in SLI, you have to make sure or crossfire that your motherboard supports it. Any motherboard that supports two times 16 slots will work with crossfire SLI. Now, when it comes down to getting optimum performance, ideally for Nvidia, you should should get um, or, N or S Nvidia only works on some chipsets such as the 900 AMD chipsets any motherboards that are Nvidia based or a couple of other things uh, Crossfire tends to work on everything now as a general rule of thumb the differences between times 16 times 16 Crossfire or times 8 times 8 are so little they don't count anymore um, when it comes down to it though you want to make sure your motherboard has two PCIe times 16 slots that can run in either times 8 times 8 mode or times 16 times 16. In other words, if you plug one card in, you're going to get times 16 mode. If you plug a second card in, both slots will either run at times 16 or times 8. That's what that means. Uh, also, when you're coming picking your motherboard, you want to make sure it's rated and all for the different things. Make sure you have enough power to keep your computer running under you know quite strenuous conditions because graphics cards can pull down a lot of power. Another thing you might want to keep in mind when it comes down to actually picking a graphics card is its size. If you're planning on buying a large case, you're all right, but if you're buying a smaller case, like a graphics card such as the 6990 is a foot long. It's like a Subway, <laughs> I'm only joking. It's 12 inches or 30 centimeters long and it won't fit inside most small cases. It won't fit inside my case. I'm currently under stress conditions because I have 560 Ti's and that's a bit mad. The fact that I can't fit more than two 560 Ti's in my case because it's so small, I need to upgrade. We'll keep, you know, we'll, we'll pick cases in the next episode when it actually comes down to it and power supplies and cooling methods. So that's pretty much how you choose your card or that's the different terms anyway. Um, you, when it comes down to the actual graphics card specs, it's kind of hard to tell the difference between cards when it comes down to specs itself because um, some cards with higher frequencies like clock frequencies will run better than cards with even higher ones and all this kind of stuff um, the best way to gauge graphics cards is benchmarking sites this is the most important thing don't leave questions in the comments asking me which is the better card don't even bother when you when it comes down to this kind of thing you need to look at the benchmarks the best sites I find are Guru 3D Tom's Hardware, uh, Overclockers UK, and they're my three favorites for graphics cards. There's a lot of them when it comes down to it. Essentially what the benchmarkers do is they put the same card, or they put a range of different cards, I mean, inside the same computer, and, it, and then they run stress tests on them and see which gives the higher frame rates. And you get graphs and all of like the different frame rates of different cards and bar charts and stuff, and it tells you, you know, which card performed the best, which card, card performed the worst. That's the best way to tell which graphics card is the best for you in terms of price and performance. As a general rule of thumb, the minimum card you should be looking at currently is a 560 Ti. Uh, that would be sort of a good starting point. 
Another good card is a 6850, the 6870. I don't have much experience with the ATI range, but they're also good cards. But the solid cards that you want to look into if you want a lasting computer is a 6950 or a 6970. They are sort of the more extreme cards that will cost you a little bit more, but that's generally where you want to go. For a good gaming computer, you want to be spending 200 or more on a graphics card at this stage, for a single one at the least. Now, ATI has just released the 7970, I think it's called. It's the more fastest single GPU card in the world. It'll run you, it's recommended for 500 quid retail price, but it'll run you into seven or 800 quid because that thing's expensive and it's hard to get. And the new graphics cards are about to come out, so it might be worth your while waiting and see if you can get a lot more performance for the same cost. For example, the 580, a current generation card, is very, very, very good and it cost you 500 quid. But the, the new card, the, the new series for 2012, is the 7970 is ridiculous it's completely off the wall how fast it is in comparison yet they cost the same so when it comes down to it i'd recommend waiting for the next set of cards to come out if you can't wait go with something now because when the current cards go out of production prices start to rise again and they'll settle in a little higher so either build now or wait but always try and buy the current generation of cards or the the generation of cards for its time i'd recommend waiting but that's it so anyway guys i hope you've enjoyed this episode of gpus sorry i skimped over some of the things but uh, and recommendations for cards but just really have to go benchmark those go to those benchmarking sites and get your information for yourself this is a very personal area of your computer and how much it performs but anyway guys as always it has been good talk and i'll see you out there